Hey everybody, so we have the February March 2023 IGCSE paper 6-2 which is essentially your ATP paper and the reason why we'll be solving this is obviously I think that nobody else has solved it yet and um, the marking scheme is also not available so I feel like I should solve this paper for you guys since the uh, May June 2023 examinations and February March 2023 examinations they have the uh, a, basically a similar pattern towards them right so um, that is why Cambridge has disallowed you know the discussion discussion of February March 2023 exams but I have a request to, to Cambridge International the thing is that you know many schools and institutes who have you know uh, who charge hefty amounts from students they are able to solve this this paper is available to the public so you know they will have an edge over those students who might not be able to afford such premium quality teachers or such you know they are not able to pay such hefty amounts to those teachers so I feel like w before copy copyright striking our channels and you know uh, terminating we Videos. either you guys upload a guideline as to what we could record and what past papers we could solve and what we couldn't or you guys could reconsider you know copyright striking stuff um, because the thing is that you know many students they will be at a disadvantage just because they cannot pay for premium teachers okay so I feel like this should be taken into consideration by Cambridge but if I still get a copyright strike you know who I don't care you know I could care less I, I'm just here to solve the paper for you guys so that you guys are not at a disadvantage okay so keep on spreading um, you know the the word of knowledge and I'm so you know it's very very wholesome for me to check out the comments and see all the thank you messages that I get you know from all around the globe you know Bangladesh I have messages from Saudi Arabia messages from India from the UK from Philippines even from Indonesia so you know that really makes me happy and that is why that that basically gives us the motivation to do all of these things now uh, let's discuss the ATP a little bit too um the, the major tip to solving an ATP paper and to scoring full marks is to understand the experiments that are being discussed, right? And to go over the entire experiments rather than just reading the questions. Try to dissect the entire experiment, what's happening, annotate, you know, side by side with it. So that you can understand the experiment, And this has been, you know, I've been a, you know, a very strong advocate of understanding the ATP rather than rote learning things. Obviously, I give you guys the topics for ATP which you guys can review um, there's the other video that has been uploaded to YouTube you could review those guest topics um, obviously they're gonna come but your February March 2023 exam is very important to understand the type of you know paper pattern that is expected for your May June 23 examination so without further ado let's just start off with the paper I'll write my name it's obviously Suleiman Khan and you guys will see my thought process now right I'm like, well, I feel like nobody can solve the ATP like me. It's like a huge claim, but I'm the best, you know, I'm, I'm the legend. But let's solve it, okay? Um, question one says, long chain alkanes can be broken down into shorter chain alkanes and gaseous alkenes. And we know that it's basically called cracking in which you need high temperature, high pressure. You use a catalyst, which is aluminum oxide. And if you check the apparatus out, he, the, the person is actually using the catalyst aluminum ox uh, oxide, right? And you need high temperature and high pressure. And the way you could get high temperature is just by heating this aluminum oxide, right? So you heat it, um, uh, you, you provide it with that high temperature, you heat the aluminum oxide. And and that basically provides you with the high temperature that is required for the entire reaction and it's going to tell you guys you see he's saying that vapor from a long chain alkane is passed over a very hot catalyst if it's saying over a wet very hot catalyst that means that this aluminum oxide catalyst must be heated right here right so i'll make an arrow here take him and it's saying that and the gas uh, the gases formed are collected over water now why is over water delivery used because uh, you know over water delivery can be used for all the gases the collections of all collection of all the gases except for those which are soluble in water right and um, you know um the, the the principle on which over water delivery works is that all gases they are less dense than air we know that all gases uh, uh, sorry less dense than air I'm saying sorry I meant that all gases are less dense than water right so that is why you have like the upward type delivery type of thing going on on in over water delivery right so since the gas is less dense than water the wa the gas basically uh, goes rises up and it displaces the water outside the boiling tube or the test tube and it goes on to this uh, trough okay 
तो वो उसमें डिसप्लेस हो जाए द वाटर इज़ बेसिकली डिसप्लेस डाउनवर्ड एंड द गैस इज़ कलेक्टेड अबव ठीक है सो ओवर वाटर डिलीवरी कैन बी यूज फॉर ऑल गैसेज एंड एनी गैस विच आर नॉट सॉल्यूबल इन वाटर ऑब्वियसली इफ़ यू यूज लाइक इफ़ यू यूज ओवर वाटर डिलीवरी फॉर अमोनिया इट्स कैन बी यू नो अ रॉन्ग एक्सपेरिमेंट इन द रीजन फॉर दैट इज यू वॉन्ट बी एबल टू कलेक्ट अमोनिया बिकॉज अमोनिया विल जस्ट डिजॉल्व इन वाटर टू गिव यू अमोनियम हाइड्रोक्साइड ठीक है सो ऑल गैसेज आर लेस डेंस दैन वाटर दैट इज वाई ओवर वाटर डिलीवरी कैन बी यूज एंड हैज दिस यू नो इट यूज द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ दिस अपवर्ड डिलीवरी एंड obviously um you know um soluble gases ke liye you can't use over water delivery theek and let's label the apparatus as well um you have a bung right here this is called a bung which is actually a stopper which prevents which you know air tight it prevents the gas from escaping or the gaseous alkenes that are formed and the alkenes that are formed from escaping that's my catalyst this is called like a you could call it a test tube or you could call it a boiling tube now it says long chain alkene on mineral wool understand that mineral wool is actually used to hold or to soak up this long chain alkene right so this long chain liquid has been soaked up in the mineral wool and the reason behind is obviously we want to you know perform the experiment at our choice we don't want just we don't want the alkene just going on and reacting directly with this without our entire setup right so first of all we have to make an entire we have to set up this uh, apparatus and in order to set up an apparatus you need to use mineral wool in order to soak up this alkene without because we want it to react at our will right and then we basically heat this mineral wool right here so we heat it up idhar bhi hum isko heat karte hain and then this long chain alkene actually vaporizes passes over this aluminum oxide and cracking is done basically theek hai so we heat two places we heat it here and we heat it here uh, and mineral wool obviously the use for mineral wool is to soak up this long chain alkene theek hai that's my delivery tube here that's also like my boiling tube or you could call it a test tube here you could also call it a collecting tube a is basically a trough the real word for a the real uh, name for a is trough but you could also call it you know you could call it a water bath you could call it a beaker you could call it a bowl you could call it a tub but you know um, again the real uh, name for this apparatus is a trough theek hai isko hum trough kehte hain other than that that's pretty much it to the entire experiment and you know the gaseous alkenes are going to be collected right here at the top and the water is going to be displaced down so okay sometimes what the examiner does is most of the times he basically inserts a bung right here as well to usko idhar bhi ek bung insert kar deta and the problem with that is this insert inserting of this bung right here makes this entire apparatus sealed right and once and heating and you are actually heating it here so heating a sealed apparatus is kept catastrophic right and the reason for that is you know because when you heat a sealed apparatus what happens is that the gas it is made and the pressure increases right because you have vapors everywhere or apparatus sealed hai so the pressure actually increases uh, and the apparatus could you know even break or explode so it's very catastrophic you should never heat a sealed apparatus that is rule number 1 whenever you're performing any heating and stuff like that theek hai तो दैट्स दैट अब इस केस में तो बंग उसने इंसर्ट नहीं किया तो दैट्स नॉट अ प्रॉब्लम ओके इट्स इज नेम द आइटम एंड ऑब्वियसली व्हाट डू वी यूज टू हीट दिस स्टफ वे वी आदर यूज अ बंसन बर्नर और यू कुड यूज लाइक अ स्पिरिट बर्नर सम सम ऑफ यू डम्बोज माइट से दैट यू नो यू गाइज कैन यूज एन इलेक्ट्रिक हीटर द प्रॉब्लम विद एन इलेक्ट्रिक हीटर इज वेयर डू यू हाउ डू यू प्लेस इट विद दिस एपराइडस लाइक इट्स सो स्टूपेड राइट आई एम सॉरी टू से बट हाउ डू यू लाइक अटैच एन इलेक्ट्रिक हीटर ये दिस इज इन द एयर हाउ डू यू मतलब इट्स इट्स प्रैक्टिस clearly not possible right so you either use a bunsen burner or you can use a spirit burner theek okay? hai so it's saying name the item of now we've understood what's going on in the experiment now we could also deduce every so it's saying name the item of the apparatus labeled a obviously it's a trough now we could you know just breeze through the questions the catalyst is small pieces of aluminum oxide explain why several small pieces of aluminum oxide speed up the reaction more than one large piece because obviously small pieces mean that there's going to be a larger surface area we've studied this that the smaller the pieces the larger the surface area um, that means more particles are going to be exposed and this is going to result in higher frequency frequency of collisions but it's only for one mark obviously the key word here would be larger surface area so several small pieces lead to a larger surface area right and then you could you know further explain it a little bit ke uh, which means uh, uh, which results in high frequency of collisions which results in greater or higher frequency of collisions theek okay? hai 
Part C, part one says, name the item of the apparatus that can be used to heat the long chain. We've already said you could use a Bunsen burner or you could use a spirit burner. Theke? So that's not a problem. Burner. Okay, <clears throat> spirit burner, yeah, Bunsen burner. Okay. Add two arrows to figure 1.1 to show where the apparatus should be heated. We already added the two arrows. One, this, this catalyst should be heated because it's saying it's a very hot catalyst, right? And we know in cracking we need to have high temperature. And one, we need to heat this because the mineral bull has actually soaked up the long chain alkanes. So we have to heat it so that it vaporizes, right? And then uh, undergoes the reaction. Okay, so we've already labeled this. Now, part D says the gas collected is tested for aqueous bromine. Obviously, gases alkenes are aqueous. They'll, they'll they decolorize aqueous uh, bromine and it says alkenes they turn aqueous bromine from orange to colorless we know that um, when the first few bubbles of gas are collected um, are tested the aqueous bromine does not change the color explain why the aqueous bromine does not change so it's basically saying okay when the first few bubbles were tested with aqueous bromine there was no change in color that means they must not have been you know your alkenes then what could it possibly be it's a very simple you know law there's a very simple logic to it and that logic is that you know this delivery when you set up this entire experiment this delivery to you must have had some you know air particles in it some air must have been there so the only logical answer to this is that the few bubbles, the first few bubbles uh, you know must be of the air present in the delivery tube that is why they are not decolorizing aqueous bromine because only alkenes can decolorize aqueous bromine so that is the only logical answer to it that the first few bubbles I could say the first few bubbles are of or must have been or I could say are of um, the air present in the delivery tube I am going a little bit faster because I have to explain the entire things to you guys you guys could you know listen to me uh, on like uh, 0.5 uh, times I'm, I'm speaking a little fast here. Now I'm saying as soon as the experiment is over and the heating is stopped, the delivery tube must be removed from the water. And that is, you know, a precaution. The problem with you guys is you guys are not taught how to perform, you know, practicals. Practical is, uh, these, these ATPs are actually the practical application of your theory, right? And since you guys have no practice for ATPs and since you guys have not performed the practicals in real life, which you, you should have, you know, the problem becomes that you are unable to solve ATPs or you guys could have studied from me so even though you couldn't uh, you wouldn't have saw you wouldn't have performed the practice but obviously i'm the king so you guys you know would be able to do this pretty easily okay so this is you know a precaution to uh, such experiments that whenever you stop heating you have to uh, you know the delivery uh, tube must be removed first you, you have to remove it very quickly and the reason for that is the co and it's saying explain what happens if the delivery tube is not removed from the water as soon as the heating is stopped see if you stop the heating and the delivery tube is still there the problem would be that this this uh, because you're heating you uh, the gas is actually expanding right when you heat things the gas actually expands and when it cools down it basically contracts so when you were heating it the gas expanded but when you stopped heating the gas contracts cools down and you know that creates like a vacuum here and this water is basically sucked back into this very hot uh, you know uh, boiling tube or this very hot test tube and it actually breaks it so if you do not remove the uh, delivery tube as soon as the um, you know the the heating is stopped what could happen is since the gas had first of all you know um, expanded and now it contracted you know it creates like a mini vacuum and that results in the suck back of this water here and that would actually you know that might break or explode this or crack this uh, entire apparatus or this um, this boiling tube okay so the reason for that would be explain what happens if the delivery tube is not removed um, the water is sucked back into the hot very hot test tube or the boiling tube and it cracks it so the water is sucked back into the very hot uh, test tube or uh, boiling tube through the delivery tube obviously and you know can crack it and cracks it or breaks it 
एंड ये क्यों होता है ऑब्वियसली बिकॉज अ मिनी वैक्यूम हैज़ बिन क्रिएटेड यू नो एंड इट एक्चुअली रिजल्ट इन अ सक बैक ऑफ वाटर एंड फॉर दैट पर्टिकुलर रीजन देर इज यू नो दिस द बॉइलिंग ट्यूब दैट वी आर यूजिंग ऑन दिस टेस्ट ट्यूब दैट वी यूज इट इट शुड बी मेड अप ऑफ बोरोसिली सेट दैट्स नॉट अ पार्ट ऑफ योर कोर्स जस्ट एक्स्ट्रा इन्फॉर्मेशन फॉर यू गैस बोरोसिली सेट इज यूज टू मेक दिस बॉइलिंग ट्यूब्स और दिस ग्लास ट्यूब्स एंड द रीजन फॉर दैट इज इट इज लेस लाइकली टू शैटर इन केस ऑफ अ सक बैक ठीक है तो ये चीज़ें आपको पता होनी चाहिए ये तभी आपको पता होंगी वेन यू गाइज हैव परफॉर्म दीज प्रैक्टिकल एक्सपेरिमेंट सो वी आर डन विद एक्सपेरिमेंट नंबर वन सेवन आउट ऑफ सेवन मार्क्स आर गन बी स्कोर्ड इन दिस एक्सपेरिमेंट ठीक है मूविंग ऑन क्वेश्चन नंबर टू स्टेज अ स्टूडेंट इन वेजिलेट्स द सोलिबिलिटी ऑफ अमोनियम क्लोराइड इन वाटर एट डिफरेंट टेम्परेचर्स द स्टूडेंट डज फाइव एक्सपेरिमेंट्स यूजिंग द फॉलोइंग इंस्ट्रक्शंस so he is you know performing this experiment in order to find the solubility of ammonium chloride okay and what he's doing is he's filling up a burette with distilled water he's running so you guys have to read this entire experiment before reading the question read the experiment please okay so um the burette is filled with distilled water run some of the water out of the burette so that the level of water is on the burette scale obviously we want to you know um, we don't want bubbles forming uh, at the end of our burette or, or uh, with the near the tap we do this in a levels hum pehle usko thoda sa run karte hain so that to uh, to basically prevent bubbles for forming right to uh, to actually um, have accuracy during our experiment and saying use the burette to add 8 cm cube of distilled water to a 5.25 g sample of um, ammonium chloride in boiling tube so you're using the burette you're adding you know 5 uh, the 8 cm cube of distilled water to this much mass of ammonium chloride which is basically present in your burette ye jo pani which is present in your boiling tube ye pani jo hai ye ek burette se aa raha hai aapke paas theek hai now um clamp the boiling tube at an angle as shown in figure 2.1 obviously you want to heat it at an angle the main reason behind it is heating it at an angle right here theek hai i think gently heat the bottom of the boiling tube while stirring the contents why do you want to stir it uh, simultaneously obviously to basically ensure um the the um to basically ensure um what's it called man Uh, that heating is uh, done throughout uh, this experiment uh, throughout this liquid right so this entire uh, uh, jo liquid hota hai isme jo heating ho rahi hoti ye ek jagah pe concentrate nahi hoti you want that heating to be taking place throughout that liquid theek hai and stop heating as soon as the solid has dissolved obviously you want to then you will find the solubility uh, jab solid dissolve ho jayega then you basically continuously stir the solution with a thermometer while it cools measure the temperature of the solution as as soon as the solution becomes cloudy and a solid it basically uses the concept of saturate of a saturated solution um, or it uses the concept of the point of crystallization when you heat it up then uh, basically the solid dissolves and then you basically let it cool down so a crystallization takes place because we know that you know soluble solids are not very soluble uh, at lower temperatures right and that is the basis on what crystallization even works theek hai to wo yahi keh raha hai ki when you let it cool down you start recording the temperature solution becomes cloudy and solid starts to form okay Experiment two: Use the burette to add 0.5 cm cube of distilled water to the mixture in the boiling tube from the previous experiment. So, experiment two me kya ho raha hai? 5 cm cube of more distilled water. is actually being added to the test tube than the previous experiment and similar and the entire stuff is the same right so the only thing that is changing is the you are actually adding 0.5 cm cube of more water more distilled water than the previous experiment so agar previous experiment mein 8 cm cube add kiya tha to second mein 8.5 cm cube hoga third mein 9.0 hoga fourth mein 9.5 hoga aur fifth mein obviously you'll have 10.0 cm cube because every time every time you repeat in the experiment you're actually um adding 0.5 cm cube uh, of um, uh, extra uh, distilled water theek hai i think use the information in the description for of the experiments and use the thermometer diagrams to complete the table to per mass of aluminum chloride it remained constant it's all uh, 5.255 5.25 throughout these experiments it never said that it changed the mass of uh, ammonium chloride so you would get one mark for writing 5.25 in all the experiment theek hai then it says total volume of water added because you are increasing uh, the volume uh, of water by 0.5 cm cube so in the second experiment it is 8 
5.5 in the third it would be 9.0 if you're writing it to one decimal place everywhere therefore you should continue to write it for the other um, uh, readings too so this will be 9.5 this will be 10.0 don't try 10 write 10.0 right because it's given the data is given to one decimal point right and now you have to basically record the temperature just you have to use your eyes i'm gonna again tell you guys agar king kisi ka aankho ka masla hai please get your eyes checked because you guys even mess up these questions like it's in the middle it's quite evident it's in the middle it's neither at you know 79 nor is it at like um it's neither at 79 nor is it at 78 it's between them in the middle so this was 75 that's 76 77 78 and this would be 78.5 so please use your eyes a little bit you know that would be a huge advantage to all of you so this will be 78.5 uh, you know i don't need to zoom in because alhamdulillah my eyes work this would be like 67.0 um this would be this is exactly at 60 so this is 60.0 and then obviously this is like your it's in between see this is also in between so uh, this is 50 51 52 53 and this is 53.5 right so this is going to be 53.5 and we check this out sorry if you check this out this is exactly at 49 so this is going to be 49. oh that is basically that theek hai so four mark muft ke aapko mile theek hai complete a suitable scale on the y axis of figure 2.2 and plot your results from experiment 1 to 5 on figure 2.2 draw the line of best fit through your point so we have to determine a suitable scale on the y axis we actually have the temperature and what is the highest temperature that we are going to we are going to about like 78.5 right so um if i use my brain a little bit this one entire box this box this box this box i have to give it a certain number that would actually result in me covering 75 percent of the graph that's going to be the rule remember even in o levels and igcc and in a levels you have to cover at least 75 percent of the graph right and you know it's a very simple technique it's usually either 5 or it's 10 uh, it says yada nahi hota ya 20 ka fark hota hai so if i check this out 30 if i call this one entire square as 10 so this would be 30 then this would be 40 50 60 70 and 80 so this is the best you know um, scale for the y axis because i'm covering more than 75 percent of the graph so that is good if If I take five as an example, if I say this will be five, so this will be then thirty-five, forty, forty-five, fifty, and this will be fifty-five. I, I am not even reaching seventy-eight point five. ठीक है? So usually it's ten. Uh, sometimes it's twenty. You just have to use your brain for it. So it's gonna be. This is gonna be forty. That's fifty. That's sixty. That's seventy. And this is obviously gonna be eighty. Now the question is, how much is one small box, right? So there are like ten boxes in between this one big square, right? You have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten small boxes, right? And the way to know, um, although it's common sense, you you know, if you use your common sense a little bit, we know that each one box would represent one, right? So. This is 70. This is going to be 71, 72, 73, 74, 75. But if you want to, you know, use mathematics behind it, what we do is we take the difference between the two. So 80 minus 70. That's the difference between these uh, these two values, two readings. And then we divide it by the number of boxes. So how many boxes do we have? 10 boxes in total. Divided by 10, 10 over 10. That gives me one, right? So each box actually represents one unit, right? So or one degree Celsius as the y-axis states. So this is 70. This will be 71, 72, 73. This, this is how you could. find out the uh, the 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 unit for actually one block take okay? a one small block take okay? a And now it's saying, okay, now we have to uh, jot down the data, plot the graphs, total volume of water added, temperature when a solid starts to form, and at obviously, so we just look at our table. At eight centimeter cube of water, you actually had seventy-eight point five degrees Celsius. Uh, so at eight, this is eight on x-axis. So at eight, we have seventy-five, seventy-six, seventy-seven, seventy-eight. Seventy-eight point five would mean it's going to be right here in between, right? So this is going to be. my first um my first line theek okay then uh, i denote it with a cross then you have like 8.5 kya pe was 67 hai so we go down again 8.5 is right here 8.5 pe we have 67 so we, this is 65 that's in between 66 67 that's going to be i'm just you know shading it for your guys per uh, sake ki main aapko show kar raha hu but it's it should be very simple if this is 65 this is 66 67 uh, 67 pe jana tha yeah 67 pe hi आपको जाना है ओके okay. 
देन मूविंग ऑन यू हैव नाइन पे आपके पास कितना है नाइन पी वी हैव सिक्सटी पॉइंट ओ सो नाइन पे वी हैव सिक्सटी पॉइंट ओ दैट इज़ राइट हीयर देन वी मूव ऑन टू दी अदर वन नाइन पॉइंट फाइव पी यू हैव फिफ्टी थ्री पॉइंट फाइव नाइन पॉइंट फाइव दिस इज़ फिफ्टी फिफ्टी वन फिफ्टी टू फिफ्टी थ्री एंड दिस इज बी फिफ्टी थ्री पॉइंट फाइव इन बिटवीन फिफ्टी थ्री एंड फिफ्टी फोर एंड देन यू हैव लाइक टेन पे यू बेसिकली हैव फोर्टी नाइन पॉइंट ओ सो टेन पे आई हैव फोर्टी नाइन पॉइंट ओ दैट्स कैन बी वन लेस दैन फिफ्टी सो दिस इज द ग्राफ दैट इज बींग फॉर्म एंड नाउ द क्वेश्चन से इज ड्रॉ अ लाइन ऑफ बेस्ट फिट इट सिंग अ लाइन राइट बट रिमेंबर आई डिस्कस इट इवन इन द गेस्ट पेपर अ लाइन ऑफ बेस्ट फिट डज नॉट मीन दैट इज इट हैज टू बी अ लाइन इट कैन बी अ कर्व इट डिपेंड्स on you know the entire structure of the graph the entire structure of how the points are scattered and i have explained this in detail in the guest paper you could check that out i have uploaded it yesterday guest paper atp i have explained this concept ki when to draw a line when to draw a curve in this case basically a curve is going to be formed so uh, you know uh, my my curves were never on point right i try my best to i try my best to actually make a proper curve but you know i always always end up missing it theek hai so kuch yun karke ban jayega my god my drawing is so bad man in terms of and obviously um i am and it should be one smooth curve theek hai so always have like this one smooth curve try to cover as many points as possible um, and obviously um, you know some points can be up or down it's not compulsory to co cover every point but obviously you have to cover maximum points with it and um, i'm going to you know um, use i'm going to draw twice on this because meri majboori aapne ek hi line mein ek hi curve banana i'm drawing it twice because obviously i'm on the ipad my god i'm trying my best to draw it properly so that it does not seem like a double line double line ke marks karte hain i have to draw it with one smooth sketch something like this my god i'm so bad at this it's just going to waste my time okay my god okay this this seems about right whatever ठीक है एंड नाउ इट इट विल आस्क सो दिस इज माई एंटायर ग्राफ दिस सीम्स लाइक डबल लाइन यू नो राइट हियर बट यू हैव टू ड्रॉ वन स्मूथ कर्व ठीक है दैट्स कैन बी लाइन ऑफ प्रेशर नाइसिंग एक्सट्रापोलेट द लाइन ऑन योर ग्राफ एंड डिड्यूस द टाइम एक्सट्रापोलेट मीन्स कि उसको आगे की तरफ ले जाए ऐसे डॉट 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 यू नो एक्सटेंड द लाइन so extend the line on your graph and deduce the temperature when a solid starts to form when the total volume is 10 point i've already extended the graph right saying ki at 10.5 what is the volume that what is the um, temperature when the solid starts to form so at 10.5 you have to show it. and look at this it's a three mark question you have to show clearly on figure 2.2 how you go about it right so at 10.5 you draw these construction lines you show ki okay 10.5 pe ye hai to iske baad main aise ja raha hu ja raha hu you have to show the construction line from the x axis and from the y axis and then obviously i go here and this is actually 41 42 43 44 45 46 so you basically end up with 46 degree celsius okay so that is three marks kiske ek mark uh, two mark to show your workings one is this one is this and one mark to extrapolate the line and write this proper um, uh, temperature okay i think solubility in grams per 100 cm cube of water is calculated you literally given the formula volume the air formula the things use this equation to calculate the solubility of ammonium chloride in experiment 1 so for experiment 1 the mass of solid is 5.25 into 100 and volume of water used was 8.0 right that was the volume of water used in experiment 1 you end up with um 65.625 yeah that's that and obviously you could round it off to you know three significant figures um, maybe like uh, four significant figures aapki marzi hai main isko round off kar deta hu to 65.6 right so isko main 65.6 you could have also written 65.625 you would have also written 65.63 your choice blah 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 i always say blah 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 you could have also rounded this off to two significant figures which is 66.0 wo three ho jate hain lekin 66 right um describe how the solubility of ammonium chloride changes as the temperature changes now you are asked as the temperature is changing how is the solubility of ammonium chloride changing so you have to find the solubility from experiment 1 2 and 3 so for one it's uh, 66 de uh, 66 degrees uh, sorry 66 gram per 100 cm cube or you could say 65.6 for experiment 2 we use the same formula uh, 5.25 into 100 and for experiment 2 we used 9.0 uh, sorry 8.5 
five um, centimeter cube of water. So in experiment two, we have 8.5 centimeter cube. In experiment three, we used like nine centimeter cube. And obviously, if you check this out, 8.5 se kya aega aapke paas? If you find the solubility from this, you end up with 61.76. And in this case, you end up with you end up with 58.33. And in the first experiment, you actually ended up with 66. Now check this out. The solubility is actually decreasing as you're adding more water. But check out the temperature against this more water. Against more water, the temperature is actually decreasing as well. So the amount of water that you're adding, temperature is decreasing, which means that the solubility, as the temperature decreases, the solubility is also decreasing. Check this out. As the temperature was decreasing when you were adding more and more water the solubility is also actually decreasing and that is you know a proof from the formula so i you can either say as this uh, temperature decreases the solubility decreases or you could say as the temperature increases the solubility increases so i'll just say as the temperature uh, increases or as the, the solubility i can you know rephrases because you know this question is solubility parallel so i'll say the solubility increases or you could say decreases as the temperature increases right or vice versa so you could either say the solubility increases as the temperature increases or the solubility decreases as the temperature decreases okay in this experiment the volume of water was measured using a burette that's good because burette is more accurate right it's more precise state the advantage of a burette over the measuring cylinder obviously because the burette is more accurate so you could say it's more accurate or you could say it's more precise we all know that Okay. Part 2 says state the advantage of using a burette rather than a volumetric pipette. You know, obviously, we know that volumetric pipette, it measures fixed volumes, you know, or aapke quotes mein aapne sirf 25 centimeter cube par hai. So you could say a volumetric pipette measured fix, measures fixed volumes, uh, whereas a burette can measure variable volumes. It can measure a wider range of volumes. So that's the advantage of the burette over a pipette. Pipette mein sirf ek hi graduation hoti hai. Wo bhi ek fixed mark hoti hai. Burette has a wider range of graduations. Hai? So the advantage of a burette over a volumetric pipette would be that, you know, a burette um, can measure variable volume or a burette has uh, a wider range or measures a burette measures a wider range of volumes whereas the pipet the pipet only measures fixed volumes Okay. And now it says a total volume of two centimeter cube of water was added to the original eight centimeter. Just the experiment he put out was to ask how many are you going to tell So it's basically saying that a total of two centimeter cube of water was added, and that is the case. Eight is basically 0.5. Is me add a 0.5. Is me add a 0.5. Is me add a 0.5. Is me add a. So a total of two centimeter cube was added. Okay. And now he's saying that uh, explain the disadvantage of adding the uh, explain the disadvantage of adding the two centimeter cube of water in one centimeter cube. Proportions rather than 0.5 portions. So it's saying that you basically say that 8 say that you can add 0.5 add kare, aap 8 mein direct 1 add kar de, you will have one more data and then is me a core add kar de, so you will have the second data. The problem with that would be that you have you end up with fewer data points, you end up with fewer results, and that actually results in a poorer graph. The graph is gonna be less accurate, it'll be difficult to find the line of best fit because now if you check this out how many how many data points would you have you would have one this would be your data point and then obviously this would be your data point and obviously this would be your data point so you'll only have three data points right because two centimeter cube pani darne ek ek centimeter cube karke pehle mein eight tha dusre mein nine ho jayega tisre mein dus ho jayega aapke paas teen data points aayenge aur 0.5 ka fayda ye hota hai a levels mein bhi hum zyada koshish karte hain zyada proportions ho because 0.5 0.5 jab aap add karte ho you end up with more data points in this case i have one two three four 
five data points in this case, right? And in the first, if I add one centimeter cube, then I'd only have three data points. So that would mean I would have fewer data points and fewer data points would actually mean uh, the graph being less accurate or the best of line fit being more difficult to uh, draw or, you know, um, it would be harder to find uh, patterns or to, to extrapolate the line or to find anomalies. So a major reason that you would have fewer data points or fewer results, you could say fewer data points, fewer results, so you would have less data. And due to that fewer results and few, uh, fewer data points, the graph would actually be, would be, um, or is gonna be less accurate. Right, or you could say um, all the other things that I mentioned previously. Okay? Suggest why it would not be possible to use a six centimeter cube of water instead of eight centimeter cube in experiment one. Okay? So if you use less water, what would happen is suggest and suggest they can suggest question means that you have to use your brain for it. Okay? It's it's gonna be hints are gonna be given in your um, in your what's it called? Uh, hints are gonna be given in your entire experiment, but you have to use your brain for it. So you think suggest why it would not be possible to use six centimeter cube of water instead of eight centimeter. It's saying that experiment one mein aapne eight centimeter cube of pani dala hai, iski jaga agar main six centimeter cube dalta, to wo kyun possible na hota? Uh, the reason being is that if you calculate solubility, um, solubility agar main calculate karo, I feel like solubility ke saath hi iska link hoga. If I calculate solubility for it, it would be 5.25 into 100 over six and that I would get 0.25 into 100 over 6 you get 87.5 that means that all the ammonium chloride would not dissolve right it's not possible to use 6 centimeter cube of solution of water because ammonium chloride ki jo solubility aayegi wo basically kitni aayegi aapke paas experiment 1 mein wo aayegi what we did it go 87.5 aayegi compared to like um, you know um, what's it called 65.6 right that means 86.86 um, 86, oh my god 86.5 or 65.6 में difference जो है इसका मतलब यही है कि जब ammonium chloride के आप solubility calculate करते हैं आपने 6 centimeter cube पानी इस्तिमाल किया उसके साथ जो ammonium chloride जो soluble है वो नहीं होगा और not all the ammonium chloride would go into you know would basically dissolve in the in the water ठीक है तो इसके पीछे ये logic है that's why we say that because it's like 65.6 grams होंगे हर 100 centimeter cube के लिए ठीक है और इसमें ज़्यादा होगे 87.5 grams on the hard hundreds and degrees come at love again ammonium chloride to dissolve in here Sarah got Sarah so we say all ammonium chloride will not dissolve obviously it's a huge difference right between 65.7 jo bhi hai aur 87.5 there's a almost 10 12 grams ka difference hai to isme jo hai itne zyada grams jo hai wo dissolve nahi honge sara ka sara nahi hoga so that is basically a suggestion that you could make or suggestions ho sakte hain but since i don't have the marking scheme i don't know the marking scheme you know there can be multiple other suggestions too theek hai suggest ke kafi answers ho sakte hain mere zehen mein to yahi bana baki dekh lete hain a student tests two solutions solution c and solution d test on solution c Te is a uh, solution c is aqueous calcium nitrate my god the easiest topic calcium nitrate aqueous calcium nitrate mean you have calcium two plus ions and you have no3 minus ions all the tests are available right here look at this beauty all the tests would be have been given in your paper right here you just have to identify the ions the anion the cation or unke tests likh lene theek hai so if you check the question out if i go back uh, question make calcium 2 plus it says complete the expected observations the student divides solution C into three portions the student carries out a flame test on the first portion obviously flame test aapne sirf cations ka padha calcium 2 plus pe flame test apply hoga and obviously what would be the answer to that color yaad karne ki zarurat bhi nahi aapko either direct the flame test for metal ions since you know it's a calcium 2 plus ion orange red would be the flame color literally that's how easy it is right so the flame color would be orange red because of the calcium 2 plus ion. 
that's going to be the observation okay um, but b says the second portion of solution c the students uh, to the second portion of solution c the student adds aqueous sodium hydroxide dropwise until it is in excess observation obviously if he's adding aqueous sodium hydroxide dropwise no3 minus ion aapke paas present hai to um, you know aur aapke paas uh, calcium 2 plus ion pada hai to aapko pata hai ki addition of aqueous sodium hydroxide would have no uh, effect on nitrate ion because for it to have an effect on nitrate ion you have to warm it and provide aluminum foil which he is doing in the third portion is may it'll only have the effect on the calcium 2 plus ion so you just go down again like this is literally how easy it is right you could check it here like for calcium 2 plus ions a white precipitate would form which would be insoluble in excess and that is the answer for it so literally that's how easy it is so a white precipitate is formed with a few drops white ppt or you have to write precipitate in full form right so white precipitate is formed and when you add it in excess you say it remains insoluble or you could say the precipitate remains or you could say it does not re uh, dissolve i would just say ke it is uh, it remains insoluble you could say all the things that i just said theek okay? hai Part C says to the product from B, the student adds a piece of aluminum foil and warms the mixture gently. Any gas produces it. So now you basically have the nitrate NO3 minus ions. And obviously, this is the test for the NO3 minus ions. What would be the observation? NO3 minus ion. When you add aluminum foil, add it, warm it, and warm it gently. So it is basically, um, you know, reduced to ammonia gas. Or ammonia. We say any gas produces tested. So we have to talk about the test. Rather than say that oh ammonia gets saying that जो gas बने उसका test हुआ है उस test की observation बता दें so obviously ammonia gas का test हमने पढ़ा है it turns damp red litmus blue वो भी आपको नीचे दिया हुआ है test में you're gonna get these questions for sure right and मुफ्त के marks हैं damp red litmus paper पूरा लिख लें turns damp red litmus paper blue yeah To the third portion of solution C, the student adds about one centimeter cube depth of dilute nitric acid followed by a few drops of aqueous silver nitrate. Um, dilute nitric acid we've studied that you add it to remove any impurities, and silver nitrate is added. Obviously, this is a test for the halide ion, yeah, bromide ion, iodide ion, chloride ion. Then a white precipitate, cream precipitate, and yellow precipitate would be formed, or yellow solid would be formed. But in this, me, you have only calcium two plus the NO three minus the. You are confused. Only you only have these three. these two ions and when you add sodium uh, sorry silver nitrate you will have the ag plus n and the no3 minus ions obviously no precipitated form silver nitrate is soluble calcium nitrate is soluble everything is soluble this is actually a test for the bromide iodide or the chloride and since you have no bromide iodide or chloride we say there is no reaction no precipitate forms the solution remains colorless or you could just say there is like no change i'd say there is no change or you could say no precipitate or you could say no reaction or the solution remains colorless right because obviously this is not a transition metal ion um, you know a solution or silver ions or calcium 2 plus ions these are colorless hote hain theek hai so it's a colorless solution okay test on solution d oh my god i'm tired in into because of going into so much depth for every question okay but say let's do this Um, the student divides solution D into four portions. Blah blah blah. Use a glass rod to transfer one drop of uh, the first portion to of solution D onto a piece of universal indicator paper. Obse observation is the universal indicator paper turns red. That means that the solution is must be acidic. It must have the H plus ions, right? That is uh, you know the indication that we could get from the observation. Because red का मतलब यही है कि acidic है ना उसमें और acidic का मतलब है it must have uh, H plus ions in it. Then test two says the second portion of solution d uh, add solid sodium carbonate to it test any gas produced and it's saying that the observation is that the sodium carbonate disappears obviously sodium carbonate kyun disappear karega kyunki जो um, जो गैस बन रहा है दिस इन द गैस टर्न्स लाइम वाटर मिल्की विच इज कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड राइट एंड इट्स बेसिकली अ टेस्ट फॉर द कार्बोनेट आयन विच व्हेन यू टेक सोडियम कार्बोनेट रिएक्ट इट विद एनी यू नो एसिड लेट्स सपोज इन दिस केस इट्स एच सी एल लेट्स सपोज कोई भी एसिड हो सकता है एच सी एल हो सकता है एच टू एस ओ फोर हो सकता है सो ऑब्वियसली राइट द एन आइन राइट तो एच ए एनी एन आइन हो सकता है ऑब्वियसली सोडियम और एन आइन का एक सॉल्ट बन जाएगा प्लस एच टू ओ बन जाएगा और प्लस कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड बन जाएगा और ऑब्वियसली 
this carbon dioxide would be further tested and um, uh, you know the gas which is produced terms the lime water milky so this means that the sodium carbonate which is added in which the solution is added is acidic this is like second confirmation that it is an acid थीके? because obviously sodium carbonate is going to react with an acid and it is basically a test for the carbonate ion right? so it further confirms that obviously this solution is ये कोई एसिड ही है ठीक है टेस्ट 3 सेज टू द थर्ड पोर्शन ऑफ सॉल्यूशन डी ऐड अबाउट 1 सेंटीमीटर क्यूब डेप्थ ऑफ डाइल्यूट नाइट्रिक एसिड फॉलोड बाय अ फ्यू ड्रॉप्स ऑफ सिल्वर नाइट्रेट ऑब्वियसली दिस इज अ टेस्ट फॉर द क्लोराइड ब्रोमाइड और आयोडाइड आयन एंड सिंग इज नो चेंज इसका मतलब है कोई एनआईन जो जो एसिड है उसका जो एनआईन है वो ना क्लोराइड है ना ब्रोमाइड है और ना आयोडाइड है एच प्लस तो हो है ही है एसिड तो है लेकिन अब हम उसकी एनआईन की टेस्टिंग करें कि क्या हो सकता है एंड सिंग इन द फोर्थ टेस्ट ऐड अबाउट 1 सेंटीमीटर डेप्थ ऑफ डाइल्यूट नाइट्रिक एसिड फॉलोड by a few drops of aqueous barium nitrate and since a white precipitate form that means barium nitrate kiska test tha sulfate ions ke liye check the you know table out jin logon ko table pehle se pata nahi hoga na to unko samajh bhi nahi aa rahi hogi ki kya check ho check um, kya chal raha hai theek hai so when you add barium nitrate and a white precipitate is formed that means you have the barium 2 plus ions no3 minus ions and obviously h plus ion and the third you know ion the fourth ion that was present the anion of the acid must be a sulfate ion because that is a test for uh, adding barium nitrate and forming a white precipitate is a test for the sulfate and barium sulfate is actually a white PPT. So, we know that this is an acid and which acid is sulfuric acid. ठीक है तो that is basically uh, what we can deduce after all these experiments हमें पता लगे कि एक एसिड था और इस एसिड का नाम है सल्फ्यूरिक अब आपको पेपर में क्या आ सकता है बजाय ये कि ये सारे टेस्ट होना ये कहेंगे the universal indicator turns blue तो वो उसको alkali के लिए कुछ कर लेंगे ठीक है so keep this in mind यही आएगा लिख के ले ले मेरे से क्योंकि आपका पिछला मई जून का जो theory paper हुआ उसमें यही हुआ है वही चीजें थी सिर्फ उलट कर दिया वही paper pattern था deduce the pH of solution D obviously solution D is sulfuric acid it's a strong acid it'll either be 0 it'll either be 1 it'll either be 2 it'll either be 3 3 super nahi likhe to better hai 3 is also a little weak you, it's, it's better to stay between 0, 1 and 2 right I'll just stick with 1 um, identify the gas made when sodium carbonate is added to solution D we already know it's carbon dioxide CO2 likhe carbon dioxide because it's not saying name it's just saying identify so you could write the formula or the name I think identify the two ions in the solution D. Obviously, one is going to be the hydrogen ion and one is going to be the sulfate ion. Sulfate ion. Because it's, a high, it's basically sulfuric acid, right? So, you could also write H plus ion and SO4 2 minus ion. Or, you pura ka pura sulfuric acid bhi likh lehen, toh aapko mark mil jayega. Halaanki usne ions maange, lekin ye pe bhi aapko mark mil jate hai. Past papers mein aise diya hota hai. Moving on. Oh my god, I'm so tired. Finally, last question. Cadmium blah 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 they react with hydrochloric acid to form hydrogen gas um, the reactions are exothermic you know I'm, I'm highlighting some things just to tell you guys um, you know, just to give you guys multiple ways of performing the experiment plan an investigation to find out the order of reactivity of three metals you have to react them with dilute hydrochloric acid and you have to react them in such a way and plan an experiment you have to know reactivity which reactive which right your plan must make it clear how your investigation will be a fair test. Uh, let me tell you, if it's a six mark question, fair test actually contains three marks. For a fair test, it contains three marks. And how will you use your um, results to place the metals in order of reactivity? So conclusion be deni hai. So one mark for, uh, three marks for fair test, conclusion, and then obviously apparatus and so on. You're provided with powdered samples of each metal. If they were not powdered samples, then we mortar or pestle se leke inko pehle crush karte, powder karte, unke do teen marks apne hoti right and you're using dilute hydrochloric acid for fair test kya hona chahiye obviously agar fair test hona acha ab hum do teen tarike se experiment kar sakte hain ek to ye ho sakte hai ki hum ek pura apparatus set up kar le ki jisme hum hydrogen hum sari reaction kare aur hydrogen gas ki collection pe ek time lage ke okay 10 seconds ke baad jo hydrogen gas jiska volume of hydrogen gas sabse zyada hoga wo most reactive hoga right 10 seconds mein jiska sabse zyada volume of hydrogen gas produced hua hoga collected hua hoga wo sabse zyada reactive hoga that's going to be so ek mark aapke iska mil jayega ki aapne um, 10 seconds ki baat ki ke 10 seconds ki baat aur, aur conclusion pir wo hogi ke obviously the largest volume of gas produced in this set amount of time in 10 seconds this is gonna be the most reactive theek hai um, ya aap ye kar sakte hai ya aap ye kar sakte hai because you will react these metals um, 
with hydrochloric acid so they're gonna obviously dissolve right khatam hote jayenge so you could also use the uh, the concept of mass ke bhai aap jo equal masses le le uh, of powdered metal and the mass jo jo metal jo hai wo sabse pehle dissolve ho jata hai wohi aapke paas um, jo hai most reactive hoga ek ye bhi kar sakte hai and because it's stating that it's exothermic you would also use the concept of temperature here so you basically you know um आप क्या कर सकते हो कि पूरा एक एक्सपेरिमेंट तैयार कर सकते हो थर्मामीटर लगा के जो uh, 10 सेकंड में सबसे ज़्यादा टेम्परेचर इंक्रीज देगा वो सबसे ज़्यादा रिएक्टिव होगा ठीक है सो यू कुड गो अबाउट इट लाइक ऑल ऑफ दिस राइट और आप ये भी कर सकते हो कि आप टाइम को कॉन्स्टेंट टाइम को यू नो टाइम बाउंड ना करो यू बाउंड द वॉल्यूम ऑफ हाइड्रोजन यू कैन से ओके टेन सेंटीमीटर क्यूब ऑफ गैस जो सबसे पहले बनाएगा वो सबसे ज़्यादा रिएक्टिव होगा ठीक है सो आइर यू मेक द टाइम यू मेक इट टाइम बाउंड और वॉल्यूम बाउंड आइर यू मेक इट टेम्परेचर बाउंड और वट यू कुड डू इज after the entire experiment you check out the highest change in temperature and that's going to be the most reactive so sare kar sakte hain lekin fair test ke liye kya kya cheeze bahut zyada zaruri hai the first thing is you say that at equal masses dekho fair test hai na to sare jo uh, powdered form mein jo metal hai sample hai they should be at, at equal masses so add equal masses of uh, you know each metal each uh, add equal masses of powdered metal of each of the powdered metal of my english is you know not uh, <laughs> बेसिकली मेरी इंग्लिश मेरा साथ नहीं दे रही है कहना चाह रहा हूँ सो इक्वल मैसेज ऑफ ईच ऑफ द पाउडर्ड मेटल्स शुड बी यूज इज यूज और यू एड इट ना यू एड इट सो एड इक्वल मैसेज ऑफ द पाउडर्ड मेटल्स टू बेसिकली ए बीकर ठीक है बीकर में हम एक्सपेरिमेंट करें फिर हम क्या करें एड एसिड टू इट नाउ यूर नॉट कैन जस्ट से एड एसिड अब फेयर टेस्ट के मार्क्स यू आर कैन से ओके एट द सेम वॉल्यूम सेम कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इन सब का एक एक मार्क है माइंड यू सो सेम वॉल्यूम कॉमा सेम कॉन्सेंट्रेशन एंड यू नो सेम वॉल्यूम सेम कॉन्सेंट्रेशन एंड यू कुड ऑल्सो से एट सेम टेम्परेचर सो सेम वॉल्यूम सेम कॉन्सेंट्रेशन एंड सेम एंड अ सेम टेम्परेचर of the acid is added because we want to keep everything else constant na so is added to the flask or to the beaker whatever thing you are using theek hai acha um or same volume aap mention bhi kar sakte hai ki add 10 cm cube of 1 mole per decimeter cube of hydrochloric acid at the same temperature at um, equal temperatures um, to each of the following beaker right so um ye aap keh sakte hain theek hai um to a beaker ni through two different beakers two three different beakers because three metals hain my bad okay then what you could do is obviously then you start timing when this when when the powder is added start timing when the powder is added पाउडर और हम सिर्फ ये हम बड़ी आसान चीज़ करें जब पाउडर ख़त्म हो जाए जो सबसे पहले ख़त्म होगा वो सबसे ज़्यादा रिएक्टिव होगा तो सार टाइमिंग वन द पाउडर इज एडेड एंड मेजर द टाइम टेकन फॉर द पाउडर टू डिसअपियर एंड मेजर द टाइम the time taken for the metals or for the solids or for the powder to disappear और इसका आपका कंक्लूजन क्या होगा टाइम के बाद कंक्लूजन यही होगा जो सबसे पहले डिसअपियर हो गया वो सबसे ज़्यादा रिएक्टिव है सो द सॉलिड दैट टेक्स द शॉर्टेस्ट टाइम टू डिसअपियर इज द मोस्ट रिएक्टिव the shortest time to disappear is the most and that's why i say obviously try to understand is the most and try to understand the entire experiment rather than rotor iske aapko pure marks acha aap ye kaam kar sakte the ki aap keh sakte ki sir nahi humne to ek aisa apparatus set up karna hai har ke liye jisme basically we insert bung here and obviously aapke paas gas syringe hota hai there aur aap volume of hydrogen produce kar rahe ho at 10 seconds you know 10 mein jiska sabse pehle ban gaya to theek hai teen experiments aap iske you could do that but for that then you are not going to say add 
these two beakers, right? Then you say add it to a conical flask, which should be attached to a gas syringe. And obviously same volume, same concentration, equal concentration, and at the same, uh, and same equal temperature or same temperature of acid is gonna be added to the flask. Start timing, uh, you know, um, um, basically measure the volume of gas after a set time, or what you could do is you, you time it until a set volume of gas is collected. So either you do time ko bound, time bound karte ho ya isko ya volume of hydrogen ko bound kar dete ho ki 10 centimeter cube jo sabse pehle bana wo sabse reactive hoga ya jo uh, the, 10 second mein jiska sabse zyada volume bana wo sabse reactive hoga theek hai to dono mein cases mein aap isko temperature bhi istemal kar so they they given you multiple uh, you know um, ways to go about it it's your choice what you want to do i'd say stick to the simplest thing um, that would either be collection of gas gas collect kar le for a, for an equal for a specific time for a set time jaise 10 second ke liye aur ya aap aise koi experiment kar le sare ka sara theek hai um, and i feel like that is it for our paper um, you see you are giving all these um, tests here anions cations gases sare tests aapko diye the aapne sirf dimag istemal karna hai so once again we actually ended up with full marks obviously cuz i'm the king i always end up with full marks but yeah i hope you enjoyed um, i hope cambridge does not strike my video <laughs> cuz what can i say i don't care to be honest i'm just doing it for you guys theek hai chalo guys take care i'm tired bye bye allah hafiz